who lamented that for the first time in history, the Jews were putting ourselves into a ghetto. And I had to try and point out that the root of the wall suggested a ghetto for the Palestinians, not for the Jewish people. Fourthly, the belief that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. How do you get the world community to recognize Israel as Jerusalem, as the capital of Israel? Just think about it. How, how would you get the world community to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel? Easy. You move the American embassy. It's as simple as that. You buy the bit of land, you build up a building, you call it the American embassy, and de facto, Jerusalem becomes capital of Jerusalem because everyone's got to move their embassy because we all have to deal with the Americans. And so Senator Bob Dole has led the crusade until he retired uh, to get legislation through the Senate requiring the U.S. Embassy to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. And that legislation was passed on three occasions. It had to be built on the first occasion by the 31st of May 1999. $100 million was allocated for preliminary spending. In October 1995, he said, Israel's capital is not on the table of the peace process. That's pretty Orwellian logic. Moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem does nothing to prejudice the outcome of future negotiations. Prejudice is everything. Uh, and that's the reason why George Bush Sr., uh, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush have refused to sign off on that legislation. Jerusalem, he said, should remain forever the eternal undivided capital of the state of Israel. The time has come to enact legislation to get the job done, and there will be increasing pressure to achieve this, funded and supported by the Christian right. Uh, over uh, 10 of the largest evangelical leaders in America, including Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, and many others, uh, took out a full-page advert in the, London, in the New York Times in 1997, 10 years ago, uh, calling upon American Christians to join in uh, supporting what they described as a holy mission. The battle for Jerusalem has begun. begun. It is time for believers in Christ to support our Jewish brethren. What was this holy mission? To move the embassy to Jerusalem. Because that's the way to get Jerusalem recognized as the capital of Israel. Fifthly, what about the temple? Well, within uh, Christian Zionism and within religious Jewish Zionism is the belief that the temple must be rebuilt if the Messiah is to return. And, uh, and so you've got people like Hal Lindsay uh, insisting that preparations are being made to rebuild the Jewish temple. And uh, Mike uh, Randall Price, uh, his 735 page, The Coming Last Days Temple, will tell you everything you need to know about how to rebuild a temple and who's trying to organize it, names and addresses of organizations you can send your donation dollars to. And uh, Gershon Salomon is one of his friends. He's the controversial figurehead of the Temple Mount Faithful. He's often a guest at Christian churches uh, in America. In 1998, uh, he said this, the mission of the present generation is to liberate the Temple Mount and remove, I repeat, remove the defiling abomination there. That's the Dome of the Rock. He says this, the Israeli government must do it. We must have a war. The Messiah will not come by himself. We must bring him by fighting. Now that resonates considerably with the zealots of the first century and with some of our Christian Zionist friends today. According to Grace Halsell, between 1967 and 1990, there were over 100 armed assaults on the Haram al-Sharif. And she says, in no instance did any Israeli prime minister or chief rabbi criticize those attacks. And every year, uh, the Temple Mount faithful seek to move two large three and a half ton stones onto the Temple Mount to begin the rebuilding work. There they are. And every year they get a bit closer. And this last year, the Israeli authorities allowed them to get very close to the Temple Mount. Now, if you are uh, uh, familiar with the Book of Numbers, uh, the, uh, the, the, yes, the Book of Numbers, you'll know that to, um, to uh, restart temple sacrifices, you must purify the temple, you must purify the high priest and the altar. And the dilemma is that you need the ashes of a red heifer to purify the altar before you can offer 
sacrifices on a purified altar. And the ashes of the red heifer were lost in AD 70, or they were hidden, and, uh, and uh, we don't publicly know where they are. So in 1998, Clyde Lott, a Pentecostal Mississippi rancher, formed the Canaan Land Restoration of Israel Incorporated for the purpose of raising livestock suitable for temple sacrifice. And according to Newsweek, in 1997, the first red heifer for 2,000 years was born at the Kafar Hisidim Kibbutz near Haifa, and she was named Melody. And the Jewish rabbis went to inspect Melody, and uh, she appeared. She was featured in Newsweek. And uh, just before they were ready to sacrifice her, unfortunately, Melody grew some gray hairs on her udder and on her tail. And she was therefore deemed ritually impure, and she probably ended up as hamburgers. But not to be uh, outdone, Clyde Lott and others are seeking to breed through artificial insemination uh, Aberdeen Anguses that will be suitable for uh, temple sacrifice. And uh, if you visit uh, the old city, the, Dru the Jewish quarter, and you visit the museum of the Temple Mount Faithful and the other uh, Messianic uh, Jewish groups, you'll find that they are building the utensils and uh, creating the furniture needed for the new temple. I wish I could end there and, and we all go away with a smile on our faces, but the future within Christian Zionism is uh, very, very pessimistic. It's based upon uh, a, a strong commitment to a US-Israeli alliance. Uh, Jerry Falwell once said, God has been kind to America because America has been kind to the Jew. Uh, Gary Bauer, who was a presidential candidate in the year 2000, said terrorists don't understand why Israel and the United States are joined at the heart. Mike Evans, who founded uh, the Jerusalem Prayer Team along with Pat Robertson, Anne Graham Lotz, Pat Boone, John Hagee, Bill McCarthy, are committed to guard, defend, and protect the Jewish people. And in his book, uh, Israel, America's Key to Survival, uh, he said this, only one nation, Israel, stands between terrorist aggression and the complete decline of the United States. He says, we stand with Israel, God is going to bless America and Israel as well. If, Ameri if Israel falls, the U.S. can no longer remain a democracy. Now, again, if you find it hard to follow his logic, he, uh, his latest book, The American Prophecies, it reached the New York Times bestseller list three weeks before it was published. Now, you have to ask, how do you get on the New York Times bestseller list before the book's even been published? I'll tell you how he does it, because I'm on his email list as well. And uh, he's a shrewd businessman, because what he tells his supporters to do is buy three copies of his book, one from Amazon, one from Barnes & Noble, and one from another distributor, because those are the three distributors the New York Times uses for working on the bestseller list. He says, buy three copies, and send them to me, and then I will recycle them. I will give them away. And enough people have done that and ordered the book to justify it getting a five-star rating on Amazon. Now, you may wonder whether America is mentioned in the Bible, so I, uh, you don't need to read the book to find out. But he says, yes, it is. As a Middle East analyst and minister who's worked closely with leaders in the region for decades, I tended to be skeptical of attempts to come up with schemes to plug America into prophetic interpretations. But after thousands of hours of research, I am totally convinced that America is found in prophecy, and I believe you will too after reading my book. Now, Amazon's editorial review observes that actual quotes from scripture are rather sparse. You know, you have to, you have to give it to Amazon's editorial review. They want to sell the books, they want to make money, but they don't want to endorse the book because there aren't that many scripture references in the book, but that's how you do it. But he goes on to claim this in the book, September the 11th would never have happened if America had fought the same bigotry in the 1990s rather than trying to appease it. Millions of Jews would be living today if anti-Semitism had not been ignored in the 1920s and 30s, the Great Depression, as well as other American tragedies happened because of America's pride and challenge to God Almighty's plan. God's almighty plan to move the American embassy back to Jerusalem to consecrate Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and encourage the Jews back to Palestine. 
That's God's almighty plan. Then Jesus can return. Christian Zionists, such as Mike Evans, John Hagee, and others, see America as the great redeemer, her superpower role in the world predicted in scripture, providentially ordained. And uh, I have to confess that uh, my predecessors in Britain felt exactly the same in the 19th century. It just, as we declined, you took over. I think it was the land lease deal we did at the end of the Second World War that tipped the balance.